So last time I talked about how you should structure your data map. Um, and we looked at the domains and the collections and what you th think about, all the things, all the best practices. But today we're gonna look at what's the difference between the data map and the unified catalog, which I think is the, like the governance solutions of Purview. There's a bunch of uh, solutions. We're gonna go through all of them, yeah, yeah, yeah. But now we're gonna talk about these two and how they are different. And maybe also similar because there are, for instance, domains in both of them. What, how, what should we do? How should we think? That's what we're gonna look at uh, in this video. As always, we're gonna start uh, with uh, opening up the solutions pane. Here we see that we, for instance, have the data map and we have the unified catalog. Now open up a data map. I'm just gonna show you what we did in the previous video quickly, because I created a bunch of things. So if we open up uh, the domains here, you see that we have now, I created a couple of domains just to show you how you could do that. And we expanded on the collections and we have some sub collections uh, and so on. So all that's set up, we put up a master data management system collection for us with both development and production and our pre-system collection. If you go into the data sources view, so that's where we have the map view so you can better understand what we did. You see here that now, if you have expanded all our levels, we have these collection level, we have the sub collection level, levels that I'm, it's not, they're now ready for me to register uh, applications on. And as we talked about, these are the physical applications that are, I should register. Now, if I open up the unified catalog and go to uh, catalog management, you see here that we have governance domains. So governance domains, like that's the same, but it's also different from, um, or you know what, I'm gonna take that back. Governance domains, that's different from the domains you have inside the data map. And it's also could be different from the domains you have in Fabric. So that's super easy to understand, but we're gonna understand it together. So I'm gonna open up my governance domains here. I'm just gonna show you what I've already created. So I've been playing around with this, you know, having some fun. And if I want to create a new governance domain here, I can do that. So I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna create one for, let's say, finance. So finance, that could be part of my organizational uh, structure, for instance. That means that I might want to choose a functional unit as part of my uh, uh, governance type. Now, now the, the governance type is where we kind of get a hint of, oh, wait, what is this? What, sh what should I think about when I'm creating my governance uh, domain structure? Because you can choose between functional unit, line of business, data domain, regulatory, or project. So that means, okay, what does this mean for me? Uh, should I structure this directly to more, towards my uh, organizational structure and functional units? Should I uh, connect it to my line of business? Maybe that's what drives my organization. So that's what makes more sense for me. Or should I connect it to the data domain? Should I connect it to a regulatory setup? Or is it maybe even a project? because you could also meet and match. You don't have to say that all of my solutions are gonna be functional units or data domains. You could also say that um, I'm gonna use, uh, or in my organization, we have actually already decided on data domains, which is cool if you have, because that's sort of impressive because then you're already thinking about data as something you want to think about and care about and govern. So kudos to you if you have done that. Um, but let's say that, uh, in some mid, uh, mid, in between something, you might uh, start up some new projects. We are onboarding a new application or you're uh, creating something new um, or maybe a new department, I don't know. Then maybe you want to use project uh, as an in-between solution, put that data in there. And then at some point it's gonna be ready to be uh, moved up to a functional unit or maybe even distributed or separated or become a data domain altogether. So you can meet and match, and this is definitely up to you. Or what I've seen most is that people either go with functional unit, unit or data domain, and then use project as a, a support or uh, all of them. <laughs> because sometimes you have organizations that are really true to their functional units. That doesn't change. We do have, um, all these uh, administrative uh, uh, leaders uh, over, over there or the leadership teams and so on. And it makes a lot of sense to 
connect them towards a governance domain. So let's say finance. Finance could be a functional unit. So we're going to uh, choose that. And then this leadership team could be, or this one uh, leader, or we could delegate to one leader, could be then the admin of this governance domain. And then you can create data products below that and have uh, your data products owners and data stewards and so on, Carol, about all of those things. You can look at one of my other videos to check how do you create data products um, and also how you register and scan sources and connect to the data assets and so on. I talked about it previously, um, but yeah, you have some options here. Other organizations are not that uh, strict on their functional units. It might change. And uh, there might be big complex organizations. Maybe you buy new companies now and then, and, and that will change and you know that will change. Then it could be a good idea to map up what data domains do we have in our organization. Can we structure this in a different way? Because then that, that would probably stay fixed or less uh, be less prone to change. Uh, even though you're changing your functional unit setup or your organizational setup. If that's the case, maybe that's some time you want to invest to do that. Or <laughs> you could also decide to have maybe the top functional unit level all the way on the top. Maybe even you have separate companies or daughter companies or something, I don't know, or maybe different countries and so on in your organization. And you do want to separate that. Maybe you shouldn't do that because, I mean, you should have one definition of things throughout your, your setup and stuff. Just, yeah. <laughs> if you want to do that, you might want to have functional unit on top and then data domains below. Oh, there's so many, so many opportunities here. So that's uh, nice and uh, challenging because you need to do something. But you have some options here. And so that also, I told you, you could have uh, parents and child. So you could have these... Uh, structures here as well. So for finance, I want to say that this is a data domain. And then I could have put this below another existing domain if I wanted to, um, if that makes sense for me. So you can also have these structures, but I'm going to put this as a top level uh, finance. I'm going to create that. If I open up Airbnb again here, you can see that I set that as a project because that was something I played around with when I had a pre-con and I had some Airbnb data. So it made sense for me to put that as a project. Um, but now let's also just create another governance domain. So let's say that we want to set up supply chain, uh, and that will be all the supply chain data. And yeah, you should, you should definitely, uh, give better descriptions than I do, but also I'm going to put this as a data domain. Uh, and then I'm not going to put this as a child, but I could have again, um, and then create. So now you see here that we have again, another, uh, governance domain created for me. Fabric February, I see if I open up that one, you see that's also a project. Uh, and that's Fabric February is this uh, conference that I organized together with two awesome uh, women in Norway. So you should check that out if you want to learn more about Fabric. But for sure, that's a project for me. So I'm going to put that there. Now, I want to show you this tip. And what I love about this article is actually this picture. <laughs> Because this is the first place that I found where they actually try and tell you how you should separate and think when you're looking at uh, the physical data state, which is then the data map, and then the logical data state, which is then the, it's called data catalog here, but that's old name. That's actually the unified catalog. You can think of that as a logical data state. And that makes sense, I, I think, because I, I told you that in a previous video, check it out if you want to dig into the data map. But the data map are these, uh, is where we put these um, applications. So we have these technical applications somewhere and you want to scan those sources and have those existing. That's where we have collections and you have physical data sources you see here and IT roles and permissions. So we are actually in the physical IT landscape. But if you go to the logical data state, that's where we have our data products and our uh, called business domains here, but that's the old name. So it's also actually the governance domains. And you see business roles and permissions. That's where we have, hopefully you should have people from the business owning and deciding on these definitions, caring about these products because that's what makes their uh, job easier and so on. So that's the difference, I think. So physical versus logical. Logical is something we have in our head. We're connecting it towards the business 
towards something that makes sense for us as humans, the logical one is actually the physical assets that we have and that we need to manage. Now, one thing that I haven't talked about is that you can connect your governance domains and map those directly towards your physical assets. Maybe you have, uh, or you want to have, um, what should be the example? Maybe master data uh, solutions. That might be a separate application. So your master data management solution is usually a separate application because it's so specific in what it, what it does, right? So that could be a separate source that you're scanning. Uh, some organizations are using uh, parts of the organization <laughs> as the governance domain. So you might have uh, data governance uh, if you're so lucky to have such a part of your organization in your company uh, organization, then that could be uh, a separate governance domain. Then you might want to connect the master data management application towards uh, in, so that will be the collection then that we have created for the master data management to watch our governance domain inside the logical layer. So you can also, whenever it makes sense, map them uh, so that they are um, connected in that sense and easier for us to understand and see what belongs together. <sighs> okay, now we went through all the things again, a lot of talking from my side. Hopefully this uh, article was helpful. I think it's um, nice. You can also look at the different, uh, different recommendations on what you should think about when you're deciding on, okay, how should I structure the unified catalog? How should I structure the data map? I think the data map might be easier because, or maybe not, but because it's the physical things and it's usually easier to make people understand and become get on board on the physical assets that we have. We have this application, someone needs to care about that. Uh, and so on. But what about the logical one? What are our data um, uh, areas inside of our uh, our organization? How do we want to structure? What are the data capabilities? Or do, do we have that? Do we want to link that? Uh, do we want to set up that map? Uh, and so on. Or do we want to connect it to our organizational units? And so on. So it depends, as usual, how you want to set this up, what makes sense for you, what's easiest. But the key thing here is IT department, sort of um, physical assets and so on. That's data map, logical things. That's the um, unified catalog. That's where we have the business side. That's where they're the bosses and they care about that. And you want them to really care about that. <sighs> Hopefully that was helpful. Gave you some like ideas of where to place these different things. Um, let me know what you think uh, in the comments below. Did it help at all? What did you do? What's your uh, experience? Anything we can learn from you? Let me know in the comments. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.